Well, former Detective Maggie Oliver joins us now. Good morning, Maggie. It's lovely to see you. Well, Thank you for joining morning, us today. Um, for us, for those of us who were so stunned and shocked by what we saw on the news and read in the papers, we thought when those guys went to prison that that might be the end of the story, that there was a little bit of closure for the country. Uh, it would appear, certainly looking at your book and listening to you speak, that that is very far from what you believe to be the truth. Very much. Um, I would say it's the, it is the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, I've done a lot of talking about this issue, but I think that we are still only starting to understand the real magnitude of what has been happening over the past 25, 30 years. Mm. Um, we've still got a long way to go. Mm. Uh, it does, it does seem extraordinary, doesn't it? Because, I mean, we say on here, you know, so many times now, if ever, if ever there's a time for you to have a voice, if you've experienced abuse of any sort, now is the time to have a voice. Go to the police, you will be heard. This is your time. It seems extraordinary that we're having this conversation now. Yeah, I mean, I, I was a police officer, you know, for 16 years, and I joined the police to put the good, the bad, guys away yeah. and I felt it was very simple perhaps naively you have kids who are telling you what's gone on so you have the evidence the job of the police is then to put that evidence to the CPS yeah. and the courts but what I saw over actually a period of from 2003 until I resigned in 2012 I saw the polar opposite of that in what was happening on the grooming cases um, and I didn't even know this particular kind of crime existed until 2003 mm -hmm. but um, the government and the politicians knew full well about it in the mid-90s because Anne Cryer was the MP for Keithley in West Yorkshire and she was banging on doors in, in the, in the mid-90s. So why? Why are doors being slammed in your face when you're trying to open them and shout loudly? I don't understand. I, I don't think, I mean, it's very difficult in five minutes to explain the full, um, yeah, the full reasons well, for it's that. All, it's, all it's all in, in the book and I, I've tried to make it very clear as to what I think. But I think that this, it's not a one-word answer. I think there's a lot of reasons why um, the politicians and the chief constables turned a blind eye to this kind of crime. Um, one of the reasons is that these kids are very vulnerable um, and I think it's more than just ethnicity. I think it's attitudes of a them and us we, attitude we, of an we underclass. Have, we've got to be very careful. I mean, obviously, we're, we're terribly careful how we word things on yeah. here. You know, one slip up and you're really in trouble if you get the wording of something wrong. Yeah. And that seems to be almost what was the concern within the, within the force there, that it was, a, it was almost a, a PC thing. They were terrified of looking racist. Because what we haven't said so far is that these guys convicted <laughs> were either Pakistani or of a, a wider Asian culture. And so, the, and, and you say that that could be happening elsewhere in the country. It was certainly happening a lot more in Rochdale than was brought to light or that anyone was yeah. ever prosecuted for. But this is the Asian community on the local community. I mean, they were locals, at, of course, at the time and, and still are. And, and you would like to think everyone embedded within the same community. Well, I, I don't think it's just me saying it anymore. When I first spoke out, it was just me. But now... Um, we only have to look around the country. You know, there's been trials in lots of places now. Um, you know, not just Rochdale, but Rotherham. You know, Baroness Jay uh, spoke very openly about what was going on in Rotherham. So it is no longer a secret. Nazir Afsal, who was the CPS Crown Prosecutor, I think in um, two years ago, he, he made it public that the government had sent an email round to all police forces throughout the country not to um, deal with this particular kind of crime. Now, the, you know, the question is, why? Yes. And I don't think it is just ethnicity. I think that is part of the issue. Um, and on o Operation Augusta, for certain, I know now, and I didn't know this then... This was in Manchester, so this was earlier than Rochdale. This was in the, 2003. Yes, it was. Mm. Um, but a, a young girl, a little girl called Victoria Goglia, had died in Rochdale. She'd been groomed and exploited by a gang of predatory paedophiles. Um, nobody was prosecuted for that. But we started Operation Augusta as a result of that death, looking at whether we had a similar situation in the city centre of Manchester, and we did. But we had a major investigation looking into that. And, you know, listeners can make up their own decisions, but the last entry on the um, database that, that we had in Greater Manchester Police went on that database on the night of the 6th of July 2005. On the morning of the 7th, we had the, the London bombing. 
Now, that is a fact. I'm not... I'm just stating the facts. Mm -hmm. It's up to the reader to make up their own assessments. Do you, do you believe, and you say that, that, that you, you felt that you, you know, you're battering your head ag against a brick wall, that you weren't being listened to, you weren't being helped from within the force, um, constant barriers being thrown up, eventually leading you to resign. Yeah. Do you believe that this is still happening now? I know it's still happening because I am in regular contact, even as recently as Sunday. I was in Rochdale. I, I have got my finger on the pulse of what's going on in Rochdale. I know, um, you know, even a few weeks ago, one of the girls that I deal with bumped into one of her abusers in Rochdale um, and he actually spat in her face. Mm. That is not ten years ago. That is three weeks ago. So, you know, I... I, f I sound a little bit like a broken record to oh, myself. But you are. But I'm trying I mean, to move... You, yeah. you just want to keep shouting it from the rooftops because it must be so frustrating. And uh, yeah. Because... For somebody who got into the police in the first time, like you started this conversation, saying to yeah. lock up the bad guys, yeah. what does that do to you personally? Yeah. I mean, the, 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 you've lost a job which you strongly believed in. At the I, I loved my job. You know, it almost destroyed me. And I think what... I mean, what I hope my book... Um, explains is what I am like as a person and I am not a bitter and twisted person who wanted to make a fuss. I saw something that was happening. Um, I've got four kids of my own and what I saw happening to these kids was just wrong mm. and if I had, I tried, I didn't want to resign. I was 15 months still within the job when I saw for the second time, a job being shelved. And I spent 15 months going to everybody, from chief superintendents to the chief constable to the Home Office, the IPCC, and nobody wanted to do anything. And then you, you're faced with a stark reality, a, a choice. You either speak out or you carry on and do nothing. And, and I couldn't look myself in the mirror knowing what was going on. Um, I wanted my conscience clear and 30 years down the road when my kids find out that I didn't speak up, mm. um, I wanted them to know that I'd tried. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know it would go this far, Holly. Well, yeah. um, well done, you. the Greater Manchester Police have said to us, uh, following uh, learning taken from Operation Span, Greater Manchester has worked tirelessly to improve its response to tackling CSE, that's child sexual exploitation, to ensure high standards of service and consistency in practices across Greater Manchester. <laughs> Um, we're seek constantly seeking ways to, in which to evolve and improve our practices. Um, thank you very much indeed for coming in. This is, this is the, the story, this is what we're talking about, Maggie's books, um, Fighting for Justice Survivors. Um, and, uh, and as I say, it's a very complicated story, but it, uh, it is all in there. Can I just say there. very quickly that um, I've started my own, the Maggie Oliver Foundation. Yeah. I'm going to start a centre in Rochdale to help survivors, not just of grooming, but from all communities, whether it's a forced marriage or um, female genital mutilation. I want a place for them yeah. to go to feel supported with access to, you know, professional, yeah. psychological, legal um, mentoring Not help. Good for you. So Thank please you. support. Yeah. Thank you. The Thank you. Foundation. We'll put details on our website. Yeah, we will do. Thank, Thank you very much. Well. Thank, Thank you.